It's been six years since I got my start on YouTube as a middle schooler, making videos about the hit web show Don't Hug Me I'm Scared, Becky Sloan and Joe Pelling's Twisted Children show, where every episode comes with new hidden mysteries and meanings to unpack. The series is centered around these three characters, who all correspond with different age groups, the duck being the older generation with a tweed jacket, a sense of responsibility, the desire to work, the yellow guy being a child with his curiosity and innocence, and the red guy being somewhere in transition, a young adult not quite ready to let go of his childhood creativity and move on to the monotony of the workplace. They're also different parts of one mind, corresponding in color and qualities with the three primary lobes of the human brain. And this is central to how the first episode, an episode about work, plays out. Throughout this first episode, Becky and Joe comment on the structure of hierarchy in the workplace and how the order gets established and enforced in our society. The red guy corresponds in color to the frontal lobe of the brain responsible for personality, communication, and reasoning. So when the three characters walk into that workplace that the briefcase, the teacher for this episode, leads them into and then leaves them in, the red guy immediately follows the sound of a telephone ringing, lining up with the communication aspect of that part of the brain, and he ends up in an office. With each call he takes, he's validated by everything around him that he deserves the higher position that he found himself in. He's just better and capable of doing things others can't. So he deserves the better meals, the comfort, and not having to follow the rules that the other characters do. People who end up in higher positions in the hierarchy of the workplace are constantly validated into justifying why they have more than others, helping keep it in place from the top down. Meanwhile, the yellow guy and the duck stay in the factory itself, and the way they handle it is completely different. The yellow guy who represents the parietal lobe, the part of your brain that's centered on sensory input like touch and pressure, which is much like how a child first comes to understand the world, fits right in line with the rest of the workers and finds purpose in his job, with coworkers similarly validating him for his so-called skill, which as the duck points out is as useless as it gets, turning parts to bits, it literally has no meaning. Some people have no higher ambitions or passions and are perfectly happy fitting in as a cog in the wheel. The rest of the workers are quite literally tools, which the upper management is using to make themselves get richer and they're conditioned into being happy with their rationed off portions of the earnings no matter how menial they get. The duck, who represents the temporal lobe, responsible for more complex language recognition, is seen throughout the briefcase's song aiming for the most innovating and ambitious jobs. So his relationship with the factory is a representation of how those with ambition and intelligence have it beaten out of them by the system so they could fit into this hierarchy. The duck at first walks in demanding respect but is unable to complete the task as well as the others and is immediately demeaned for his efforts. Given worse food, basically hazed into staying in his lane and not wanting to do anything better with his life. He's sent into re-education for his attitude and during this discovers that the red guy reached the position of authority that he wanted, without the work or intelligence to back it up. This confrontation between the red guy and the duck that happens in the office is like a mini version of Marxist class consciousness. The duck calls his boss out for not being deserving of his job, tries to prove that everyone can do it, but messes things up in the process, giving the red guy a chance to enforce his authority and fire him. When the duck is on his way out, he's stuck in an elevator where he's presented with all these solutions on how to get out of the dark place that he's in, starting out with drugs, then going to this digitized mental health that just makes him more and more confused, and then finally to the care hound, a baptism of sorts that rebirths him as a content, enthusiastic worker, ready to perform his job and fit in place. When he walks back into work, they're 40 years ahead at the yellow guy's retirement party, and we could see that nothing changed in the roles that were first assigned. The red guy stayed lazy and rich at the top, and the yellow guy stayed content and overworked at the bottom. But seeing that his friends aged wakes the duck up to the realization that something is off, and he snaps out of his trance, tossing the retirement card into the conveyor belt, and the yellow guy has no choice but to go after it. It's his entire 40 past years of work that's on the line. It's his whole identity. Work was all that he had, he killed himself to defend it, and all his boss did in response was fire him. The briefcase comes back, he was the first aid kit all along, and when they reach the end of the song and the lesson, the duck starts to question if all the work he wanted to do so badly at the beginning had a point anyway. In response, the briefcase throws a coin that lands straight into his eye. The money literally blinds him to the reality of the system. Subscribe to hear my breakdown of every episode, dropping every other day over the next week, and thanks for watching.